Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings your Garage Logic Podcast number 1,185, November 6, 2023. 75 degrees on this day just mm. three years ago in 2020. And it was zero on this day as they as we were still digging out of the Halloween blizzard in 1991. Hail the flashlight, King! Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic. Can you hear all that Reavers, pretty good? Manning Technology <laughs> Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight, King. Fireworks Commissioner and the Keeper of Common Sense, your Mayor, Joe Sushir. We're joined in the studio by a very important person. Her name is Lori Thompson, a 15-year Anoka Hennepin School District employee. Hi, Lori. Hi, Joe. How are you today? Good. And you are here because you are a rare sort. You are standing up to... Uh, the idea that you need to be put through a diversity inclusion uh, equity program at Anoka Anoka Hennepin Anoka Anoka Hennepin, and uh, you're 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 arguing that that you don't want to do that. Correct. Tell us why. Um, I, I because it implies to me that the people that run our school district or anybody else who's into this type of training, it, it implies to me that they're saying, I'm a racist, I'm an oppressor, mm-hmm. and because I'm white. Mm-hmm. And that is just not the case. It's, it's important for me and the listeners in Garage Logic to hear this from you because you're on the inside, you've testified to your school board. You've been in these training centers. You've been asked to, for example, decenter your whiteness. What in God's name does that mean? Do you know? I'm not even exactly sure what that means. I, I think to me it means that they are implying that all white people think they're better than any other race. Mm-hmm. And it's time that we, instead of focusing on white kids in our schools, Mm -hmm. that we need to kind of take a step back and put more focus on our minority students. Is that tantamount to the school district admitting that they've ignored black students or students of color? That's exactly what that means. And, you know, a couple of years ago, there was a, a, a group that started out. It was called the Good Trouble Principle. Mm hmm. And principals from all over the state of Minnesota Soda, signed on to this group. And um, it's funny because nowadays you can't find any, anything about them online anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do recall reading about them, and one of their goals was to decenter whiteness in our schools, which tells me that you know what you haven't been doing your job all along. If, mm-hmm. if if you feel you need to decenter whiteness now, then that tells me that you weren't focused on all the other kids back in the day. That you were just more focused on white kids, and now you want to decenter it and make them less important. You are a, a, a special ed para. Correct. What's that mean? Um, I work with students who um, have some type of special need. It could be a behavior. It could be a a physical. It could be maybe they um, need a little more help academically. It's just kind of a variety of things in in the students that we work with. And you've been there 15 years. Yes. Were you at other school districts prior to that? No, I was a stay-at-home mom for 10 years. How many kids do you have? I have three. And they are who? Uh, my oldest son, um, not sure I want to say his name. Well, you don't but, have to. Okay. He is a, he's just turned 30 here last week. Um, he's a deputy U.S. marshal. All right. Uh, my son, my second son, who's 27, um, like I said earlier, God willing, he get through his training and he will be a deputy U.S. marshal at the end of the month. All right. And then I have a, uh, our daughter, Nicole, who is out of high school now and she works with young kids in a daycare center. And uh, you come from a large family. Yep. I uh, grew up in Maple Grove. I am uh, one of 10 
kids. Great. I always referred to myself as lucky number seven. <laughs> right. And uh, how yeah. many acres did you guys farm? We well, we didn't farm, okay. but we uh, we had two and a half acres. Okay. Um, everybody else in the neighborhood had five, except us and our neighbors. Yeah. And uh, it was a good place to uh, to grow up. My parents did a excellent job. Raising well, obviously us. they were racist, weren't they? Uh, not at all. <laughs> You know, and I, I'd like to say, too, that I, I, I went to the school board a couple years ago and provided testimonies. My first testimony on critical race theory, and one of the things I pointed out in there was that, you know, I, I was lucky to come from a loving home, you know, with my nine brothers and sisters. It wasn't always easy for my parents, but we certainly were never given the impression or the message from my parents that we were better than anybody else because we were white. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just, you know, the golden rule applied back then. You just treat people like you wanted to be treated. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what race they were, what country they came from, none of that. You you just be kind to people. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of this training going on in our schools today is just causing so much division mm-hmm. and it, it it's just not helping race relations at all why has this training become so crucial to the uh, mission of schools what i call it the failed academy right uh i'm i'm i think everything that's wrong in this country is stemming from education uh, when I say the failed academy, I most particularly have meant colleges and universities, but it's it's evident in a variety of levels. Uh, why why do Anoka Hennepin employees have to study core concepts around equity, diversity, and social justice, including foundational terminology? The language is boilerplate from activism. It's all BS as far as I'm concerned. What what has happened? What what brought this to the forefront in your career that you suddenly go to school one day and you learn, oh, we all have to attend these classes? What happened? Well, I actually had a little taste of this about five years ago, just Mm -hmm. a little short, um, you know, session a couple weeks before school started. We all had to go in and and, and do some things. And that was when I got a first the first taste of it. And even back then, I didn't like it. And I actually did get up and, and, and walk out. And then it was pretty quiet. I didn't hear a whole lot about it. And it wasn't being really shoved down our face. And then I think. What really got it kickstarted again was the whole George Floyd incident. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just like taken off like crazy since then. What, what is the, uh, uh, technically describe what happens. Are you required to attend these meetings? Or, or do you get a certificate at the end of the process? How does the school know you've adopted this nonsense? What, how does that work? I, I don't know that it's required. I've never seen anything to say that it is, or I've never seen anything to say that it's not. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just given our schedule for the day of the staff development, and that just happened to be one hour on October 2nd. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't really know what to expect. And then, you know, here, and here we are today. But there is another session coming up for us on December 4th for another hour. And then I believe March 5th is another one for two hours. So, Are there slides presented? It's almost a slideshow type situation. There was on October 2nd. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure what they have in store for us on those two days coming up. I'm reading from a Sheila Qualls piece, a slide entitled, What is Social Justice? Explain that social justice is when equity and justice are achieved in every aspect of society rather than only some aspects or for some people. According to the slide, social justice includes a society in which the distribution of resources is equitable. Well, that's Marxism. And social advocates who have a sense of their own agency as well as a sense of social responsibility. Someone somewhere is making a lot of money writing this. Absolutely, it, it, it's just uh, it's just over the top. There can I'm going to uh, uh, leave the topic for just a moment. But what what I've been saying here, there is no such thing. You can't have equity and freedom. It, they don't coexist. 
And yet here's this tremendous push in the uh, uh, Anoka Hennepin district for equity. It can't, it can't exist with freedom. What, are you alone in your objection to this? Absolutely not. I've had so many staff members reach out to me that are totally against this, but They're you fearful. know, here I am, I'm taking one for the team. I'm speaking out. Yeah. I am the silent majority. And they're just afraid to speak out. What are they afraid of? Well, I suppose uh, retaliation from mm-hmm. some of their coworkers, um, being reprimanded by employee services, potentially losing their job. I mean, you know, people got to work. We all need a paycheck. And, uh, yeah. So, Well, what are the employees like who, who buy into this? Well... Those are the radical ones. Okay. Those are the radical employees. Those are the teachers that are really involved with the teachers' union. You know, I, I, most of the teachers I've worked with over the years are in the union. They mm-hmm. don't agree with everything and all the decisions that their union is making. They don't like their union dues going to this garbage. Mm-hmm. But yet they feel they have to be a part of it in case down the road you know, they might get into trouble and they need their union to back them up. Mm-hmm. This, let's explore this making kids less than. <laughs> uh, give me your thoughts on that. Well, you know, it, it's funny you bring that up because that was one of the things that I, I mentioned. In I think my, it's sinful. It is. It's, it's you know. It's I mean, evil. They're lowering the standards. Yeah. Because they th- that they want everybody to pass and thrive. And I think that all students, no matter what color or race they come from, are capable of doing that. So do I. But when you start lowering the standards, what message are you sending to our black students? Mm-hmm. You're telling them that, you know what, you're not capable of it. You're not capable of thriving like the white students. So we're going to lower the standards to make you feel better. I mean... It's just an awful, awful message to send to these kids. Well, plus, you, that isn't thriving. You're and not if you thriving. said that out loud, if you said that out loud, you would be considered a racist person. Right. And they're doing it without saying it. Right. It's just. It, exactly. You know what? I, I've worked, I've built many positive relationships with students over the years. They, they've come from black students, white students, Mexicans, Russian kids. I don't look at their race and mm-hmm. determine how I'm going to serve these students. Right. Mm-hmm. That is just the furthest thing from my mind. I'm going to treat them all respectfully, and I'm going to support them based on their own individual needs. It almost sounds like you're in stages of grief. Are you Are you sad <laughs> about this? About what's going on? Yes. Well, you know, in, in, in a sense, yeah, I am, you know, I'll probably start to cry now, but... No, a, you, you don't, you can't. You can. It's GL. There's actually there is no crying in Garage Logic except <laughs> on certain occasions. But I get it. You 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 got into this for the right reasons. Right. You got into this because you wanted to help kids. I mean, I have a grandchild now who's six months old. Mm-hmm. You know, I fear what's in store for her when she starts kindergarten oh, in I five can. years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I have two. My son Mark. You know. Her father is. No, now you know, you're mentioning names, dear. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Swipe that. Anyway, he, um, you know, he has a girlfriend who's got five year olds that just started kindergarten, and uh, it, it's. I consider them my grandchildren, even though they aren't biologically. But it frightens me to think what they are going to be exposed to if if we don't get this garbage out of our schools. Why is it there? Why is it there? I wish I could answer that. What future does the uh, uh, does the uh, do the superintendent and his administration? What what future is it they're imagining? I wish I could answer that. I think you're going to have to ask them. They'll come on with you, Joe. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. The Anoka Hennepin School District. It's it's the largest one in the state, right? As far as I know, yeah. And the fact that this all surface didn't surprise any of us. No, I'm not surprised. But here, again, that's why it's important to have Lori Thompson here. I can say it till I'm blue in the face, but I'm nobody. 
here is a woman, Lori, that you're there. You're, you, you're there every day, and this is what you're seeing, and this is what you're expected to do. Now, December 4th, you say there's another session. Yes. Are you required to attend it? Um, I don't know. If you're required to attend it, will you? No. Okay, and it, 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 does that put you in risk of some sort? Of guess, losing your job. I, I guess I'll find out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when On they... On what possible grounds could you lose your job? Well, I don't know. But, you know, I'm telling you, by forcing us to attend this training, mm -hmm. they're just creating a hostile work environment yep. for us. Mm -hmm. yep. You know? Because you, you, you have many, many co-workers who share your sentiments. Yes. But they're, they haven't reached the point you have where you've just said the hell with it. I'm going to start talking. Right. Right. You started with school board. You addressed them. Uh, you've taken the big step to come here. Uh, there are people like you all over the state, all over the country in districts who realize this is happening. What it's going to take is more of you. Right. I don't know how that can be inspired, but it's going to take more of you. But when I read what you have to go through here, uh, there's another slide called Social Identities and Groupings describing social groupings as privileged, the group that controls the value system and reward in a particular society, uh, the group whose members have significantly less power, and the oppressed, the group whose members have a significantly less power and or control over their own lives than do other members of a dominant group in a particular society. What in God's name do your superiors want? Uh, you can't have equity and freedom. You can't have equity and in individuality. You can't have equity and achievement. It do, they don't coexist. Equity means I have to be exactly the same as my neighbor. Right. Well, that's not the United States. Right. No. Well, uh, you know, I read this stuff, and, and I just sometimes I just have to read it over and over because I'm like, what are they saying? This is a, a bunch of just word salad to me. A lot mm -hmm. of this stuff is. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're not equal. We're never going to be equal. You know, you think about youth sports today. Everybody gets a trophy today mm -hmm. because you don't want to hurt Tommy's feelings because mm -hmm. his team came in last place. So everybody gets a trophy. We're just... I, I, Do you know what intersectionality means? No. Because I don't. No. I don't. No. Some material from the first session educated employees in intersectionality. A phrase coined by controversial legal scholar Kimberly Crenshaw, who is best known for her defining critical race theory. Critical race theory is an evil dynamic thrust upon this society that stems from the failed academy, the universities and colleges. Uh, Thompson said, you, I'm quoting from the, the piece that was in Alpha News. Thompson said the opening slide of the training infuriated her. It reads, we acknowledge the complexity of exploring roles within majority white spaces, which are common in academia. We do not want to contribute. We do not want to contribute to the heteronormativity, hyper visibility, tokenizing and or educative labor of participants who are black, indigenous, and or people of color, economically disenfranchised, disabled, or gender nonconforming. Our goal today is to decenter whiteness and acknowledge the role of anti-black racism that upholds and perpetuates white supremacy within our institution and beyond. Can I say something to you that maybe you agree with or don't agree with? I don't think racism would be a topic in this country if these people would go away. I think race, racism would disappear if you didn't have these but uh, it's because it's useful their industry, idiots in right. academy trying to sustain it and make it grow because this is how they're making a living. Somebody came to your school and sold them this package BS, and that's how they make a living. And then here you are, you're supposed to take it. This first paragraph that I just referenced, did you understand any of it? No. I said it's a lot of word salad going on there. And then you said, I will not decenter whiteness or any other race, but will continue to provide support to my students based on their own individual needs. And you wrote that to the superintendent and the, and school, the school board. board. Yes. Do you know the superintendent? Well, he just came on board July 1st. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I did meet him during the hiring process back uh, last fall, November. Um, I have known past superintendents. I, if you bumped into any of them and mentioned my name, they would know who I was. Mm -hmm. um, David Law is now over in the Minnetonka School District, mm -hmm. which really isn't doing much better than the you Enoka know, Hennepin. All one and the same. Well, huh? That's pretty much. It's happening all over the country. Right. It, it, it's not just Anoka Hennepin. It, it's just, it, it's all over. Can you excuse me while I tell people about garage doors? Sure. All right. Precision garage door of... The Twin Cities? Well, that and I got a note from a guy who was taking care of them in Florida. You're kidding. No, because Precision garage door is all over the country. We're just lucky enough to have Precision garage door of the Twin Cities with us, and they're sponsoring uh, our town council meeting... November 15th at Tattersall, Tattersall Brewery. Mm -hmm. You must RSVP. This is for council members only. You can still join the town council. This is going to be an actual town council meeting. Well, we're going to talk about critical race theory. No, we're not. Oh. Uh, it's <laughs> open to town council members, but you must RSVP to garagelogic.com. And if you're not a member, there's still time to sign up and uh, take into account this great garage door company, Precision Garage Door of the Twin Cities. Scott Willery in Tennessee said, our garage door at our Tennessee home went on the fritz last weekend. I did a quick local search, and guess what company popped up first? Precision Garage Door of Tennessee. I made the call, and their fellow came out that day on a Sunday and had my door working like a champ in less than an hour. I told Shane that I had called his firm because of the advertising I've listened to on GL. He confirmed that his firm has the same policies as the Minnesota operation, 24-7, no premium for weekend calls, and guaranteed work. Precision is my company in Tennessee, and it'll be my company in Minnesota the next time I need service. Your advertisers are terrific. Thanks again, GL Scott Woolery in Tennessee. It's Precision Garage Door of the Twin Cities, 612 Two six three six nine eight five or precision door mn dot com. There's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.com org in Arizona 1-800 next step 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342 in New York call the 24/7 hope line at 1-877-8 hope ny or text hope ny 467-369 Oh, it's such a clutch off-season pickup, Dave. I was worried we'd bring back the same team. I meant those blackout motorized shades. Blinds.com made it crazy affordable to replace our old blinds. Hard to install? No, it's easy. I installed these and then got some from my mom. She talked to a design consultant for free and scheduled a professional measure and install. Hall of Fame son. They're the number one online retailer of custom window coverings in the world. Blinds.com is the GOAT. Shop Blinds.com right now and get up to 45% off select styles. Rules and restrictions may apply. Street, trail, track, gravel travel, Moon Motorsports in Monticello has us covered. Right now is the best time of the year to buy the motorcycle you've been wanting. By the way, you street riders, you should look up the bike that our chief engineer Weber ordered from Moon. It's a Yamaha XSR 900 GP. This thing is so cool. Right now at Moon, you can get zero payments until 2024 free first motorcycle service and your choice of free winter storage or free in-state delivery for all motorcycle purchases. And for you dirt and trail riders, if you buy a KTM, Husqvarna, or gas gas model, you'll receive 
a three-year warranty, or a $500 gear credit. So stop into Moon Motorsports there in Monticello, a short drive from the Twin Cities. Discover what the most exciting power sports showroom in the region has waiting for you. They are Moon Motorsports, KTM, Husqvarna, Polaris, Can-Am, BMW, Triumph Ducati, Yamaha, Honda, ski and now Gas Gas. That's 11 brands in one shop. Check them out on the web, moonmotorsports.com. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. We're talking with Lori Thompson. Lori's been at the uh, Annapinanoka School. What school are you in specifically? I'm actually working with uh, pre-K kids okay. this year. This is my second year working with them. They're all four-year-olds going yeah. into kindergarten next year. Oh, and, man. And, so and, and, I work at an off-site location, and, and, and it's a blast. I love them. But okay. You know what? Here, let me say something about that, too. So they're all four. Right. Like I said, I have black students, white students, Mexicans, Muslims. You think these little four-year-olds are all looking at each other's skin color? Nope. No, but when the school playing? is determined to destroy them. I'm glad you said that because I've got a now third grader. Well, it, it's not his Muslim. It, that's Timmy. Right. It, right. They, they don't know that unless they're taught that. Right. And so as you start getting into the, you know, it might start the elementary then a little bit. It's yeah. getting much more common in the uh, middle school and high schools. Lori is here because she, uh, to her great credit, uh is balking, balking at the idea that the employees of the Anoka Hennepin School District have to take this, I guess we call it a course or a training session in DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And what you're finding is it's very, it's it's much more nefarious than it would appear. It's, uh, it's an absolute effort to make sure white people are convinced that they're no good and they're racist and they've held people back. Uh, I, I don't buy it, and obviously you don't buy it, which is why you're speaking out. And I guess what, what concerns you at this stage in your career is this, is this speaking out going to cost you? And there's, the chances are uh, the activists behind this BS probably don't listen to this show. <laughs> True. What did you want to tell us? Well, I I just have a few talking points that I've been thinking about while I've been preparing for this. And um, I've already mentioned I heard from numerous staff members who feel the same way as I do. Um, I think that our educational institutions, including the teachers unions, I mean, they have completely gone off the rails. And I feel they are the biggest threat to our K-12 students and young adults at the colleges and universities across the country. We need to eradicate this madness and get our educational institutions back on track. They are no longer focused on the core subjects of reading, writing, math, and science, and that is evident by the decline in proficiency levels and test scores throughout the state. Our district is more focused on this DEI training and social-emotional learning than they are with restoring academic excellence in our schools. This type of training causes more division and only hurts race relations in our schools. Our district has spent thousands, perhaps millions of dollars on DEI and social emotional learning. It is my understanding that one of our board members requested information on the cost of all this training only to be told the district would have to hire someone to go through all the data and that would cost a lot of money. Wow. I love guests who come prepared with talking points. Seems to me <laughs> the district does not want to be transparent or accountable to the taxpayers in our district. We have one board member, Matt Audet, who has been fighting like hell for two years to make the changes necessary to move our district in a positive direction. Unfortunately, the other five board members are not on the same page. He's the only one that seems to have his head screwed on straight. It's amazing to me. Well, wait till you hear this one now, Joe. All right. And I just came across this on social media, and I don't do social media. I don't do Twitter. Joe I loves it. Do, I don't love it, and I'm, I'm prepared to say. I don't do TikTok. I don't. What's the other Chinese one that communism. Trump has? What's, I, I don't have. Truth Social. Uh, True social. I don't do any of that, but mm-hmm. I do follow a couple of Facebook pages that pertain to what's going on in my school district. Right. That is it. And I learned on here that 
Apparently, the term Death Star is the name given to our district office by principals and teachers working in the school buildings. If that is the case, what does that say about our school culture? Yeah, I'm, I'm not following that. This is the uh, this is the contention of somebody writing on Facebook that the school office is called Death Star. Uh, apparently, yes. Well, the Death Star dis- is a reference to Star Wars, and that was where they they were rebuilding the Empire. Somebody has termed that hmm. to our district. So, you uh, it's important to keep emphasizing though. You know many teachers who aren't buying this. Yes. I'm always trying to be careful on this show that, to say that basically what I'm talking about when we bring this up, it seems to me to be mostly administrative. Uh, God knows how many people your superintendent has fluttering around him. But your superintendent ought to be ashamed of himself for, for acknowledging this stuff and implementing it. Presumably it would have to go through him. Are, are there school superintendents uh, in this country who would have said, no, we're not having that? I don't think so. Really? Our superintendent now came from the Osseo School District. He was in our district before, and then he accepted a position as the superintendent in the Osseo School District a few years ago. And then David Law, our former superintendent, is now in Minnetonka, and Corey McIntyre, our current superintendent, came from the Osseo School District. It's a great uh, intramural club. It's a nice have. club. It's, it's, it's like the good old boys club. Right. Really. Do you, can you think of a super in your career who would have rejected this? No. Really? Why? I can't answer that. I don't know why. Not to rock the boat, wanting to stay on the, the as Joe calls it, the third rail. It's a club they're in. They right. just it's, keep. It's the good old boys club. It's a club. And they move They're to, all in it together. You mentioned a couple of things earlier about division, and you also mentioned a lot of the teachers that have reached out to you in support of you, but risk you know being ostracized. Have you heard from a lot of parents since some of this has come to light? Um. Only comments that I've seen on social media about uh, Sheila's article. Um, I also had a letter to the editor in our local paper last week. That's also been posted. Um, I, I meet people out in the community that are, you know, campaigning for our school board candidates and um, in, in that way. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think what's needed, and I don't know how it will happen, I've been seeing for years that the people who most need to rebel against this are the parents of kids of color. They, the, yeah. Those parents should be taking your superintendent. Oh, well, I was going to say something physical. Let me change my mind. Those parents ought to be leaning over the superintendent's desk and saying, why, why, how dare you tell me that my child is less than? Right. Where are these parents? Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're allowing this to happen, and it's destructive. They're ruining these kids. I agree. They're ruining them. You know, and here's a little point to back up what you're just saying, Joe. So there is a, a gentleman by the name of Rashad Turner. He used to be like a, mm-hmm. a cultural liaison right. person in the We've White We've had Bear. him on the show. Okay, well, there you yep. go. So this is a quote that is on his Facebook page. Funny how the teachers' union, the biggest white supremacist group in Minnesota— tries to call out the white supremacy and hate of other whites. Ironic, isn't it? We've seen the damage that they've done to all students, especially students of color. Mm -hmm. They are not the voice that any parent should be listening to. Anyone running for the school board needs to be focused on quality education and bringing Minnesota education from the bottom to the top. We have the worst disparities in the country, and 50% of white kids can't even read at grade level. So there is a person speaking out for how all of this is affecting the it students It almost has to be all blown up and start over. It's not working. No. Uh, it isn't. And that's why earlier when you had said about, you know, trying to fight this, you know, being on the opposite side, but if you come out against support, then you're all of a sudden you're labeled as you're being, you're against education. Well, no, 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 I, I, I'm against the direction that the education has decided to go. That's completely exactly. different. Right. 
What happens to you, or what is your life like between now and December 4th, the date of the next meeting of this BS? You'll well, just go about your teaching and helping. and Right. And uh, then December 4th rolls around. Uh, you won't be attending. Well, I will go to my staff development that day, mm-hmm. but this diversity training is just one hour of the day. Right. So I'll attend everything else. Right. It's just that portion of it that I'll just choose to sit out. And then it causes we'll, me a lot of stress. When I read that stuff on October 2nd, I am sitting in my chair. My heart just started to pound. Mm-hmm. It was just racing. Mm-hmm. I mean, the physical reaction I had to what I was reading, mm-hmm. I, I seriously, I should have got up and left the room. That's how bad it was. Okay, and so now you're going to be at staff training on December 4th, and the hour for this this evil comes up, and you leave. Uh, will that be noted, and someone will report that? Oh, probably. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I already I stated in my testimony to the board that I'm not attending this mm-hmm. diversity training anymore. Did anyone on the board uh, express uh, any empathy to you or any understanding of what you what you contend? Uh, no, I haven't heard from anybody at this point. Um, in the past, our board chair will usually send a written letter to anybody who spoke in front of the board. Um, I have not received my letter yet, mm-hmm. even though I didn't actually get up and speak that day mm-hmm. because they weren't going to allow me to have three minutes to say what I had to say. So I emailed my testimony to them. Well, so I, I saw still your... do expect to get some type of a written response. I just haven't gotten it yet. I saw your testimony on YouTube. YouTube? Yeah. Oh, that was from two years ago. Oh, that was two years ago. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah. And and someone kept saying, your time's up, uh, Lori, your time's up, and you kept going right. until you were done. <laughs> I had to get that last comment in. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, you had a pedophile teacher there who ended up in prison, right? Yep, he's 30 years. Mm-hmm. The, uh, are you nearing retirement age? <laughs> well, I am. Uh, well, yeah, sort of. I'm, I'm going to be 61 next month, so I, I'm getting there. Although I, I don't know that I'll be able to do this for another four years. And this brings me to another point here. I work with a lot of paraprofessionals that... They're my age. Mm-hmm. When we all start leaving, this district is going to be in a world of hurt because mm-hmm. the support for the students isn't going to be there. That's exactly what I was just about to ask because we've seen it in a number of different professions, whether it's you know police officers or what. There's just a lot of people out there right now who are more than qualified, who are in it for the right reasons, but just say, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this. Right. And they choose not to go down the same path that you have. Are you seeing that? Mm-hmm. That's just a damn shame. I'd like it to really know is. how this training, uh, especially if it's embraced by a, a believer, let's say a believer who teaches math, what what possibly can that class be like? Uh, are we going to uh, are we going to if a kid wants to say two plus two is six? Are we going to say that's that's fine, Tom? That's good. That's a good try. Is that where we're headed? Yeah. You know, I went to see, I don't have, you guys know who Dr. James Lindsay is? I I don't. Mm -mm. He was a, I went to see him a couple weeks ago up at the Greenhaven Golf Course in Ramsey. This was, uh, he was uh, picked up by the uh, Child Protection League to come in and speak. And he's just phenomenal. But he was just like giving examples of, like you said, talking about math and Mm -hmm. how they can... How they can get this, this type of thinking into simple math problems, mm-hmm. and it and it just blew me away. Now most people, when they're looking at it, would not think anything of it, but when you really look at some of like a, I'll just say like a word problem, the words they use, the way they word it. I mean, it's just so it is. It's it's getting to be in not just even in math, they're getting it in there. So as you step back and then you start thinking of your grandchild, <laughs> this is where you fear for the future. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you, but it's been so important to hear it from you yeah. because it doesn't mean anything coming from us. Right. It, it means a great deal coming free from you. Right. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Right. 
Are you less nervous now that Joe wasn't too mean to you? Well, he was pretty relaxing. <laughs> I'm not mean. No, no. Just to us. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Wait till you leave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'll turn on the charm. Did you get I, to all of your talking points? Well, I, you I just want to do. I, you can have all the time you want. Oh, great. Okay, because. Four score. And Wait, I, let me let me do this. <laughs> let me let me do this. Oh, let I me did all this. Let me do another spot and let's all come right. back to you. Let's okay. come back to you. Uh, the center of the American experiment has nominated its finalists for the Golden Turkey Awards. Lori, this is a wasteful government spending. We don't have time to go down that road. But the center of the American experiment. Uh, has selected four nominees for the 2023 Golden Turkey Award, the $500 million office building. That's a good one. The Minnesota legislature is about to build another new office building for themselves, and once again, they're doing it without ever taking a vote on the floor of the House or Senate. Most employees at the Minnesota House of Representatives still haven't fully returned to the office from COVID, but that's not stopping them for building a Taj Mahal of office buildings costing double what they spent on the entire capital renovations. You can go to the center of the American Experiment dot org slash golden turkey and vote for your choice of the golden turkey, including the flying squirrel study, the one hundred and ninety five ninety five million dollar Northern Lights Express, the twelve million dollar governor's mansion renovation, and the golden turkey winner will be announced live on GL on Wednesday, November 22nd, and also a great website to check in on every day, the Center of the American Experiment. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Suchere. You know, Minnesota Masonic Charities is one of the leading grant makers in the state, donating millions each year, impacting, just what we're talking about now, education, cancer research, elder care, children's health, and, of course, community service. The Masonic Center, uh, Cancer Center is the hub for cancer research at the University of Minnesota and is the leading the, in the fight against cancer with research on the causes of prevention, treatments, cures, and is one of the leading cancer research institutes, institutes in the nation. As I stumble through this, their research <laughs> on the causes, prevention, detection, and treatment of cancer has helped tens of thousands of people. They're the real deal, folks. The Masonic Children's Clinic for Communication Disorders in Duluth provides early identification, treatment, and support for childhood communication disorders. They need to communicate. They have helped thousands of families unlock the world of communication for their kids and will help them lead fuller lives. So learn more about them on their website, mnmasoniccharities.org, mnmasoniccharities.org. Lori Thompson with the Anoka Hennepin School District is with us. And you, you were telling us off air you had something else you wanted to note. Yeah, I, I got a few things here I just wanted to point out. Um, one thing we haven't really talked about is the mental health crisis amongst our kids today. Mm -hmm. And it's getting worse. It's just getting worse by the day. And I believe our, student, our uh, schools are contributing to that. They're exposing them to ideas that they're not mentally or emotionally ready to process. What, what, give me an example. Well, you, you think about all this, uh, you know, this this ideology with the, the transgender and the pronoun stuff going on. You know, I've talked to many students, my neighbors who are now graduated, um, and just politics, the whole George Floyd thing. You know, these kids are afraid to speak up with their classroom if they have an opposing viewpoint. Mm -hmm. they're, fr they're afraid they're going to be shunned by their classmates. Maybe their teacher might retaliate against them by giving them a lower grade or whatever. Kids are afraid to speak up. And I, I just can't imagine the internal turmoil some of these kids are going through when they go to, they just sit in their class. They're afraid to say anything. They just take it all in. They don't feel like they can speak up. It's, it's just not a good thing, mm -hmm. no, you know. Not at all. Um, I, I do have to give a shout out to uh, Sheila Qualls over at Alpha Dose. Mm -hmm. um, I think she did a phenomenal job on this piece. Mm -hmm. um, I think you guys are probably aware of the, uh, the uh, Trapped, the Chaos in the Classroom episodes that she does for Alpha News. Yes. Um, fantastic on those. So anybody who wants to listen to those can go over to Alpha News and, and, and pull those up. But anyways, 
Sheila's a rock star, and she does outstanding work. So, Her, her yeah. husband would have been a hell of a governor. I know, I know. Yep. I met him at our school board meeting. I don't know, maybe it was last, I don't even know when it was, but he spoke at a board meeting recently that I was at, spoke at, and super nice guy. Um, another thing, too, the, uh, you know, we got school board elections coming up throughout the state. They're it's tomorrow. tomorrow. This year. Um, Education Minnesota has spent $90,000 on digital media in support of their endorsed candidates in the, just these four school districts alone. Anoka Hennepin, Rosemount, Apple Valley, Egan, Minnetonka, and South Washington County. And they are endorsing candidates who subscribe to this DEI exactly. training. I have a question about that. All right. Is that not a conflict in any way? Uh, no, I suppose they can donate to whoever they want to. Okay. You, people can go to their uh, county websites and pull up, pull up the uh, financial statements because this is where all this information is. I am not making this up. Well, I know, and I'm not yeah. suggesting that you are. Yep. I guess what my question about that is, well, isn't their source of money, isn't that taxpayer money? That they're using for campaign contributions? Well, if it's coming from Education Minnesota, aren't there? I, I would think there would be like some dues involved there. That yeah, there are. You okay. Know? Okay. So that so here Sorry. you have a lot of teachers that don't agree with this stuff, and their dues are going to support candidates that they don't want. You're a 15-year veteran of this district. You're soon to be 61 years old. <laughs> You've liked this career. Will you summarize for us what has happened to your career? Will you summarize for us what's going on in the schools? Well, I started doing this like 15 years ago. And, and back then, um, I liked doing my job. Schools were safer. Kids were held accountable for their actions and their behavior. Nowadays, it's the schools have done a 180. They don't hold kids responsible for their actions. Um, fights are breaking out in schools across the state. And, and they're not doing anything about it. They've, they've taken our, our school resource officers out. It's, it's not safe being in some of these schools today. I'm lucky I am where I am today in my location, but I would not want to actually physically be in a middle school or a high school today. Mm -hmm. I've talked to teachers who say that um, kids are allowed to walk the classroom as long as they show up and they're in their classroom for attendance, they're marked as being present. Mm -hmm. However, after attendance, they can just get up and walk out and, and roam the halls for the whole class period, but yet there's no consequences for it. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's beyond the pale. It's, it, it uh, really is. It's in, it's, we're in bigger trouble than we know. Yep. And I would love to have on as a guest, maybe you can help me. I would love to have on your opposite. I would love to have in studio someone who buys into this and is willing to defend it with me. Do you think that person exists? Oh, I know they exist, but I don't think they're going to show up in your studio. <laughs> I would love that. I would love to hear them try to rationalize just the equity question because equity and freedom cannot coexist. It can't happen. They're, they mean the opposite. <laughs> they, do you think you could keep your ear to the ground and find me someone? I'll work on it. Yeah. I, I don't hold great hopes that... Uh, with the superintendent, for example. Well, I wonder if he would come on and defend this nonsense. You could always call our, uh, I don't even know what his title is. The communication spokesman? Well, no. That They're would be, worthless. That would be Jim Skelly. Yeah. Why don't you give a, send out an email to, uh, what is his name? He's our diversity director. In the oh, district. good. Oh, I'm going to look that up. Darren. Okay. Uh, well, Darren Sherrill, S A G R R I L L. I actually sent him an email the other day and I'm still waiting to hear back from him. 
So he responded, and then I replied, and now I'm waiting to hear back again. So uh, he he would be the one. Okay, I'd love to have a teacher too, math teacher and English teacher. But okay. the picture that you're painting. For those of us that are on the outside, that, that don't see everything happening on a daily basis, the picture you're painting makes it seem it's worse than we even think. Yeah. Oh, God. Yep. Very All uplifting. Right. Very are uplifting. enough parents involved? More and more parents are getting involved. And mm -hmm. what's nice is we even get some grandparents that are getting involved, you know. Mm -hmm. So outside of the education problems in and of itself, is that our number one challenge right now with with especially with kids development is the lack of parenting and good parenting that plays a role in it. Yeah. A big role, you know, that's a shame. And then you throw them into our schools, which is like a shark tank. Why don't you keep us informed between now and December 4th and then after December 4th, just shoot me an email every once in a while. Uh, so we can follow what's going to happen to you between now and December 4th and after December 4th. Would you agree to that? Sure. All right. Thank you. We'll be very nice to you. Lori Thompson has been with us. I can't thank you enough. I think you're, uh, I don't think you're courageous. I think you're normal. Yeah. You're, you're, you're doing what should be done. Right. And I hope the people of your school district realize it would be criminal to, to somehow have you lose your job, you should be able to stay there and speak up. Right. All right. So and let's... I, I just want to let people know, too, that um, the Minnesota Parents Alliance has a voter guide out. And uh, you can go to their website, minnesotaparents.org, mm -hmm. and find out what candidates they are endorsing in your school district. Mm -hmm. Give that again. What's that website? <laughs> minnesotaparents.org. There'd be nobody they could endorse in St. Paul that I'm aware of. Right. And then, um, and just, you know, and in closing, I, I just want to say, say, say this. I often think of that famous quote by Edmund Burke. Is it Burke or Berkey? Burke. Burke. That goes like this. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Right. Unquote. That's right. And I just want to say that to all those listening today, our kids need us and they're counting on us. You do not have to have children in our public schools to speak up and make a difference. You might be a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, or just a concerned citizen whose tax dollars are going to our public schools. We are at war both culturally and spiritually. We need to fight this garbage and take back our schools. So get out and vote on Election Day. Thank you. Thank you, Lori Thompson. Big doings now at Maple Grove Lock and Safe with the Black Friday sale running now through Thanksgiving. That's right. Rich, the owner, he's not going to do that lame one day slash and burn deal. He's doing a sale all month long with the purchase of a Liberty Colonial Centurion USA or Freedom Model safe. Get a free light kit, a dehumidifier and safe power outlet kit installed at Maple Grove Lock and Safe. This remarkable deal. And these accessory kits are a must-have for every single Liberty safe. We really need these things. Maple Grove Lock and Safe, they have over 60 safes on display in the showroom. And when you buy a Liberty safe, you know you're buying the best safe made, made right here in the United States of America by upstanding American citizens. Get a free light kit, a dehumidifier, and safe power outlet kit installed at Maple Grove Lock and Safe with the purchase of a Liberty Colonial Centurion USA or Freedom Model Safe through the entire month of November at Maple Grove Lock and Safe. 6901 East Fish Lake Road in Maple Grove and on the web, maplegrovelockandsafe.com. The Earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. Uh, Lori Thompson, who views the destruction of the academy from the inside, she mentioned uh, the teachers' union dropping tens of thousands of dollars on school board races. I, I happen to have that piece. Uh, again, Alpha News covers a lot of stuff you just won't read in the Star Tribune or the Pioneer Press. But Education Minnesota, the state's teachers' union, one of the most powerful political players in Minnesota, has spent over $80,000 on supporting its endorsed candidates in local school board races in the final days of the election season. 
Uh, as she mentioned, the union announced the digital advertising campaign in a press release Wednesday saying its get out the vote push was a response to unprecedented outside spending on full fall school board races. Education Minnesota launched a get out the vote ads to uh, voters in several suburban districts. The first time the state union has run such a campaign. Usually they're one of the biggest spenders in Minnesota elections. Uh, campaign finance reports show the union spent twenty-five grand in Rosemount, Apple Valley, Egan, nineteen grand in South Washington County, thirty-nine grand in Anoka Hennepin, from which uh, Lori Thompson has arrived, and four grand in Minnetonka. There was eighty-seven grand spent on digital media campaign between seven, October seventeen and twenty-six. This is just a fraction of what they will spend trying to maintain control of your kids in tax dollars. We'll never outspend them, but we can continue our mission of training parents to give them a run for their money in every district of Minnesota. The Minnesota Parents Alliance said in a response. And in Minneapolis, we have news of uh, uh, Marxist revolutionary meetings for school board members. Uh, That happened in September. There's a picture of some dweeb here who apparently is a Marxist. Mm. But the uh, the printer didn't help me on this one, so I can't really read the whole thing. But uh, the uh, international Marxist tendency uh, had a Marxist school situation this September. And there, uh, well, and you got a you got a president of the Minneapolis School Union, Greta Callahan, who uh, said that what they're all about is ending capitalism. That's never worked anywhere. Uh, That it does not stop throughout history, other groups trying it. Uh, It doesn't work. Uh, It never has and it never will because the freedom of the individual is intrinsic to the human condition and it just just won't work. And uh, they keep trying. Uh, Minnesota, you, you watch St. Paul will reelect some screwball named Sean Till Allen. She's the one who uh, dreamed up the phony racial incident. Oh, right. At, the, at, right, a, the at a Japanese, Japanese restaurant. restaurant and called all her Facebook friends to come on down there and let's give them hell. And that's the kind of people that the, the, reader, the, the voters are not aware of. They're not paying attention. They're voting these corrupted, uh, these ideologically corrupted people into the school board. In the meantime, the kids can't read, they can't write, but they sure as hell can tell you which pronoun to be called by. It's right. just a sad, sad situation what's happening. And all the evidence is right there in front of the taxpayer. Mm-hmm. The, the education scores are lower than they ever have been. None of this is working. Yet, we're just going to double and triple and whatever else down on this. We're poorly led, young man. We're poorly led from the top down in this state. Couldn't be more poorly led if we tried. And here's John Height to corroborate me with everything he's got in the news to show well, you how poorly maybe, led we are. Let's go, maybe John. Not every, maybe not everything. Uh, this news, by the way, brought to you by North American Banking Company. Uh, speaking of electing people... Tomorrow, of course, is Election Day. That's when I vote. I vote on Election Day. Isn't that quaint? John, when did you vote? In August? I I haven't voted yet, Okay, good, good. fully in favor of it, but I have not voted yet. Yeah, I know you are. Well, you're wrong, but that's all right. (laughs) (laughs) On the ballot in St. Paul tomorrow, a sales tax increase. See, that's what you get, Joe. (laughs) Voters will be faced with a question asking if the city's sales tax should be increased by 1% to pay for road reconstruction and park improvements. It would take effect on April 1st of next year and last for two decades. Joe, how come you guys didn't have that in St. Paul beforehand? How come you need this now? Uh, It's a game they're playing. It's a bait and switch, according to none other than uh, Jane Prince, an outgoing council member who wrote an interesting piece in the Pioneer Press yesterday. That money will go to pet projects no matter what you're being told. Uh, How does not every voter in St. Paul see that? Please tell me. Well, maybe they will and vote no tomorrow. (sighs) But that will only screw us in the long term because they'll come after the property taxes. See, the yeah. property taxes Good should point. be used to fix the roads. But that yeah. horse left the barn no. 50 years ago. Well, I'm sure that the 96 people that come out to vote in St. Paul tomorrow will have, have a good interest in I this. think the turnout will be higher than 96, Chris. 
at least 196. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when, uh, Kathy Lantry is an uh, organization member for Vote Yes for St. Paul. Of course she Paul. is. She, of course, uh, before retiring, led the St. Paul Public Works Department. Also, the city council president for 11 years. She says it's needed for upkeep on the roads. But business owners are not too keen on the idea. Some feel it will force shoppers out of the city to buy goods or stop them from coming to St. Paul in the first place to shop. Officials said St. Paul would collect nearly $1 billion in revenue over the two decades with the tax increase. If voters pass the measure, St. Paul will have the highest sales tax of any city in the state. Yep. Uh, to, uh, today is, as Joe said, the final day for in-person early voting ahead of Election Day. Most absentee voting locations open today normal hours. Polls on Tuesday will be open 7 in the morning until 8 in the evening. Municipal elections usually don't get as much turnout or attention, as Chris pointed out, as presidential or midterm years. But there are still several seats and issues on the ballot across the state. And, of course, in a lot of cities like Minneapolis, a lot of city council seats up for grabs. Whoever gets elected there will have a big effect on how that city moves forward. Law enforcement looking for a man who was impersonating a police officer in Waseca Saturday morning. Shortly before noon, the Waseca Police Department took report of a police impersonator. That impersonator described as a skinny, tall, white man in his 40s with short hair along the sides and bald on top. Officials say he was wearing a black outfit with a tan vest and a duty belt with various, uh, various accessories, unknown if he had a gun. According to police, the man stopped at a home on the 500 block of 2nd Street Northwest and told the resident he was there for a noise complaint. After a short interaction, the man left the home. It was reported the man was driving a black Ford SUV with a light bar on top and a spotlight on the driver's side. According to the police department, the SUV was marked Waseca Police, but was not one of their squads, and the graphics were not the same. Authorities are working to find a picture of the car from surveillance cameras in the area. Police are urging anyone with information to call 911. They see the vehicle and or person that was one of my biggest fears raising kids i remember you saying somebody that, yes. playing fake cop mm. Mm. i don't like it i think they should be hung okay all right those, those old police cars are big items though you see them all well, the i know time i hate it i thought i advocated a law uh, and i hate to create new laws but i don't think police departments should be allowed to sell those vehicles to the public why because then, because there's, cause then some idiot like this guy can go around and think he's a cop. Yeah. Plus those uh, those vehicles have been rode hard and put away wet. Yeah, but they got the special engine. That's true. Uh, this is not a good idea. 35-year-old man arrested Friday night in Minneapolis after state patrol officials say he punched a state patrol trooper. The trooper stopped to do a welfare check on a man standing outside a stalled vehicle about 10.30 in the evening on I-94 at 3rd Avenue in Minneapolis. The 35-year-old pass uh, was a passenger in the vehicle, showed signs of impairment. After the man got back into the vehicle, he punched the trooper in the face. He was arrested and brought to Hennepin County Jail. Charges are pending. According to officials, the incident is still under investigation. From the Star Tribune, a teenage boy died from his injuries late Friday after he and his cousin were shot Halloween in Brooklyn Park. 16-year-old Shardid Hachi Farah of Minneapolis died at North Memorial. He had been on life support since he was shot Tuesday evening. His cousin, 16-year-old Deary Muhammad, died Tuesday after the shooting. Minneapolis police said in a search warrant affidavit that the two boys who were killed were suspects in the death of Jaden Malik Anad Hallman in Minneapolis on October 30th. So that's three deaths. Yes, correct. Isn't that something? Well, uh, that, that didn't stop them from going out on Halloween, I guess. No, that, well, apparently, according to police, they were suspects in this death on the 30th, then they went out. Yeah. And, uh, and somebody retaliated, according to police. A northern Minnesota doctor has been sent to prison for evading nearly more than half a million dollars in taxes for much of this century while also owning rental properties. Joseph Meyer of Rozo was sentenced in U.S. District Court in Minneapolis to a four-month prison term, six more months of home confinement, and ordered to pay what he owed in back taxes. He had pleaded guilty to tax evasion in connection with a scheme that spanned from at least the year 2000 while working for the Mayo Clinic until the year 2018. Meyer, who turned 63 on Tuesday, routinely 
earned a six-figure taxable income as a licensed medical doctor, as well as income and interest from ownership of rental properties. He repeatedly challenged his tax obligations in court, concealed his income from the IRS, sued the IRS without success, and then sued his rental tenants for complying with legitimate IRS levies. The total tax bill that he dodged, according to prosecutors, uh, $484,164. The prosecution confirmed in a court filing on October 19th uh, 19th, that Meyer, who works in the emergency room at Life Care Medical Center in Roseau, runs a clinic in International Falls, has made restitution in full. You know, you can't actually, beat the IRS, but you can certainly send them a message. If you're right. upset, what you do is you just write F the IRS on yeah. your return. You take a stand. And you just, you see, roll the dice. I, uh, <laughs> I would like to point out, I told that story to my family in North Dakota this past time when I was home. They all thought it was hysterical yeah. that somebody yes. would do that. Yeah. They, they found uh, I can't imagine out. who would do that. I don't that. know anybody yeah. that would yeah. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. And then they found the aftermath somewhat amusing also. Yes. So. Thank God I did it when I didn't make any money. That's the key. <laughs> yeah. Early in the career. Right, right. <laughs> so did they show up right at your door? No, no. They they knocked. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in national and international <laughs> headlines, the judge presiding over the civil fraud trial of Donald Trump admonished him this morning to keep his answers concise, reminding him in the courtroom that, quote, this is not a political rally. As the former president and leading Republican presidential candidate began testifying in a lawsuit accusing him of dramatically inflating his net worth, uh, Trump's turn on the witness stand in a case that cuts to the heart of the business brand he spent decades crafting represents a convergence of his legal troubles and his political ventures. The judge added, I do not want to hear anything this witness has to say. He has a lot to say that has nothing to do with the case or the questions you're asking. Echoing the stance taken by two of his sons, Donald Jr. and Eric, in their own testimony, Trump sought to downplay his direct involvement in preparing and assessing financial statements that the attorney general says were grossly inflated and fraudulent. Trump also downplayed the significance of the statements, which went to banks and others to secure financing. And uh, as he said in the lead up to testifying, he, uh, the, he said there was no significance to what was on the paper, pointing to a disclaimer that he says amounted to telling recipients to do their own calculating. Eric and uh, Don have the combined IQ of a hummingbird. Yeah. And what Trump is up to, should he win, God forbid, is no better than what the socialist Marxists are up to. It would just be the flip side of that coin. Uh, Meanwhile, good Walsh, picture there, buddy. Pink, thanks for that good picture. Uh, speaking of, of the election, the Wall Street Journal reporting, barring complications from his various court cases, the race for the presidency is shaping up into a match the majority of Americans do not want to see, according to the recent polls. <sighs> Other news from the polls, a series of polls released Sunday by the New York Times and Siena College showed that Joe Biden was trailing Donald Trump among registered voters in five of the six swing states they surveyed. The polls found voters said by a wide margin that Trump's policies as president, despite his personality, helped them more than Biden's did. A poll released this past week from Quinnipiac University, we talked about it last week, showed the two men essentially tied in a hypothetical matchup. The race would be one for the history books, the first rematch of major party nominees since the 1950s. If Biden and Trump again lead their party's tickets, the contest would feature the nation's oldest president against the nation's second oldest president. Hello? Trump. Gosh. <laughs> if Trump prevails, he would become the first former president to reclaim the White House since Grover Cleveland in 1892. Let me ask you a question. Go. Who who was the Republican rainmaker who got caught because he was uh, using young women for nefarious purposes? The guy locally? Yeah. Uh, oh, what the hell uh, was his name? Uh, I got it. Okay, when he was on trial. Lazaro? Lazaro, Tony Lazaro. Yeah, Lazaro. Lazaro. When he was yes. on trial, I'm just picking him arbitrarily, and I'm not defending uh, his treatment of young women. I, I'm just saying, when he was on trial, could he have gotten away with the stuff that Trump's saying? Would he be punished for it? Yes. yes. How, how does Trump get away with this? How does Trump get to? It's the third rail. Well, the judge did say, "Hey, come on." Yeah, got, but so it doesn't stop him. I know. Right. He was issued a gag order. Well, how do you uh, how do you get away with this? If I was on trial for something, do you think I could go into the court every day and say, "Hey, judge, you're a screwball. You're an asshole." Right. I can't do that. You would be in trouble. 
I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. You got well, it. and last week we didn't get why members of his own party aren't maybe perhaps, you know. I don't get it. Speaking out against him, so. Apparently we're missing the point, Joe. Yeah, go back and edit that out, Larry. <laughs> okay. That part I said there. Got it. Ah, I didn't I mean to. Passionate. No, I don't He's want good. that in there. Let, let yeah. Edit that out, Larry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll take a break. Yeah. Now in more news, prominent Democrats have turned on squad member Representative Rashida Tlaib after her hostility to Israel and her embrace of genocidal language. She's a liar. The, yeah, well, uh, the thing she did this weekend, she probably shouldn't have. She uh, tweeted, from the river to the sea is an aspirational call for freedom, no, it human isn't. rights, and peaceful coexistence. Oh, no, it is not. not. Death, destruction or hate. No, it is not. We She's a liar. The, we have found the one thing here that Joe Sushri agrees with certain members of the progressives in the Democratic Party yep. uh, agree with. Yep. Because uh, they came out and attacked her, the far-left progressives, including Bernie Sanders, who yep. said, no, no, that's that's wrong. You, you got the wrong idea there. Well, Bernie so, is uh, Jewish, so he knows that the river to yeah. the sea means the eradication of Jews. Right. That's Doesn't right. mean a picnic uh, going down that river on a kayak. A nice raft. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Dozens of Democrats, including those far-left progressives who normally would side on issues with Tlaib, immediately responded, saying the first part of that comment basically calls for the eradication of Israel and Jewish people and that it should never be said. Yes. She's yes. a bad, bad actor on this in this country. She's a liar. Uh, Let us huh? do without her. <laughs> a new poll from YouGov published late last week explores a topic a lot of us who love to read want to know more about the book owning habits of other Americans. The survey <laughs> You know what you are? You're mean. You're just who mean. Is? You are. Who? You. I'm, I'm not at all, Chris. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I like this story. Survey I read reached. books. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Chris, would, you apparently don't because you don't like read books. Yeah, other people would like to know what books you're reading, I bet. The survey reached 29,000 people across the USA and explored what readers do when it comes to buying, storing, and reading books. First and foremost, the bulk of Americans own at least one book. 85% own at least one book. That's all you need to know, folks. Yep. 20% of Americans own between 1 and 10 books. Okay. 14% own between 11 and 25. 13% between 26 and 50. 4% of Americans claim to own between 500 and 1,000 books. 3% own more than 1,000 books. I'm in the 4%. Isn't that just hoarding at that point yeah. if it's 1,000 books? Yeah. Well, no, no. The problem is getting rid of them. Yeah, that's I suppose the, that's hoard. I don't hoard them. I got them some now in the stacked up in the bathroom. Huh? Do you okay, have a never be short of reading material? <laughs> right. Okay. Do you? Uh, is it much like when you have a bunch of old newspaper clippings? Have you tried to bring them to like, let's say, a university you may have attended? Well, I, I, uh, I thought, <laughs> I, I thought maybe that would, would be a good idea, and it and said that no, we're not we're not interested. We, we in don't these. need that. we don't need these. I uh, yeah. my I was told that? if I keep adding books, I need to get rid of books. So in the last two years, once a year, I've taken about fifty to hundred books to the goodwill. The well, last two years. That's what I'm going to start doing because half price books. I just it's I, a waste oh, of time. <laughs> just a waste it's not of worth time. The effort. Right. Not yeah. worth the effort. Uh, a lot of people, by the way, uh, they like. Uh, uh, not physical books, but the online books. A lot of people. A lot of a lot people. Of, a lot of people. Like, a lot of people like the books. online books. books. You own any online books, Joe? Uh, zero. I have about ten. Zero. But I, I, I don't like them. I'm I reading a book. book. I'm going to read a book. I'm not holding a piece of plastic I, technology. I agree completely, but there's a couple times I went for it, mostly because of cost. I'm not opposed to listening to a book on audio. I just never have. Have you ever Same been approached? With me, yeah. Same with me. No. Really? Hell no. Why not? Well, why would I be? You're in the industry. You're so in the what? business. I, I, that's it. Uh, Rookie, how about you? You know, um, I don't think so. Mm. I've never been approached. Uh, I, took I. A, uh, I took a course. Uh, in what? In how you should do that to oh, read yeah? books. And the, the guy told me straight up, he said, 
uh, hi, aren't you a news reader or something? I said, yeah. Huh? He goes, you guys are the worst to read these because you don't get into the emotional content of it. Oh. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay. That, that's how my class started. I'll okay. be damned. So, I'll, I'll yeah. see you later. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, bud. How do you store your books, Joe? Because that's part of this survey also. Or well, they're do you everywhere. organize them at all? They're, but, well, we I mean, have you plenty of shelves. Uh, they're yeah, on, but you just put them in, right? I mean, you don't. They're everywhere. Oh, they're yeah, organized. Yeah. Oh, they're organized really? by author, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I yeah. mine are semi organized. That's the best yeah. way I can. Good afternoon and welcome <laughs> to Author's Corner on Garage Logic. <laughs> this afternoon in the corner, we have number one New York Times best selling phenomenon, Vince Flynn. Mitch Rapp. What will happen to him this time? <laughs> this author's corner includes excerpts from a very professional announcer who is available to fill the audiobook. With Vince Flynn, Joe. Sound like Janice Borman. It did sound just like Janice Borman. Yeah, yeah. We wow. did uh, just just get an email from uh, Scott Mature. Now Scott's a, a chef, right? Yes. Scott works uh, yes. as a chef. Yeah, he's out he? in Montana. Well, he says I own five hundred plus books, but over four hundred are cookbooks. Oh, so, that's a lot so of cookbooks. Okay. <laughs> Got it. When does John take his break? He's not going to. We don't have oh, a break good, this time, good, so you just stop good. me whenever if, right. if you want me to stop. Speaking of cookbooks and food, huh? Tyson Foods has recalled about 30,000 pounds of dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets. This was a big, big source of controversy in my home mm. over the weekend. I ain't oh, eating no chicken nugget shaped like a dinosaur. Oh, you got the big claws and stuff. No said, way. we got to get rid of that stuff. No way. Chop Apparently... Apparently, they found pieces of metal in the popular children's food. Oh. Uh, now, this is, uh, it's not Minnesota. However, there were some in Wisconsin already found in 29-ounce packages. The recalled product has the establishment number P7211 on the back of the package. So, that's P7211 on the back of your Dino Nuggets, if uh, that will tell you if they're the bad ones. What's Both of these Nuggets. Hey, these <laughs> You want to you want to head over? Nuggets. We can watch the ball game tonight, and we can serve up some Dino Nuggets. No, no. I don't want to. Both Let's of these. just have a sandwich. Some we can dip them in, Chris. You know, little. Oh yeah, a little honey nuggets. mustard. Mm -hmm. Sure, there you go. Both of these. Mm -hmm. Come on, these but, nuts. <laughs> Apollo astronaut Thomas Kenneth Kenneth Mattingly, the second, known for helping the crew of Apollo 13 home, has died at the age of 87. It happened last week. Uh, Mattingly was born in Chicago, 1936. He went to graduate high school in Miami, earned a degree in aeronautical engineering from Auburn in 1958. He started his career with the Navy. He went by Ken and TK, eventually joining the Air Force Aerospace Research Pilot School as a student. Uh, you might remember uh, Mattingly from the Apollo 13 thing. He was supposed to go on the mission, ended up not because he, I believe he was sick at the time. And... Uh, he helped talk them down because, remember, Apollo 13 had the issues. Yeah. So he walked them through everything from the ground. And then eventually he was uh, the command module pilot for Apollo 16. And uh, if you saw the movie Apollo 13, he was portrayed by actor Gary Sinise, who you might remember also played Lieutenant Dan. So in Gary Sinise life. indeed does have legs. John, do you lives. realize the Vikings have a quarterback who is quite literally a rocket scientist? Yes, I Joshua did know that. Joshua Dobbs. I don't yeah. think he would tweet out the question, do Lieutenant Dan have no, legs in right. real life? No. I don't think he I would I think either. he would look funny at that person. <laughs> John, thank you. You're welcome. I want to tell you the Mueller Memorial is a family-owned mortuary. They've been serving families for more than 75 years. Over three generations, the current generation is led by my friend Scott Mueller. I get letters from people. Some of them I, I have trouble placing uh, in the in the copy of the ad because it just sounds so weird to have banana bread at a funeral. But Mueller's done that. Or he'll set up a bar. Or he'll do anything you need to do to ease this critical time in life. Gets that anxiety right out of the deal. They're patient people. Very knowledgeable They've been doing this a long, long time. They've taken care of both my parents. And what Mueller does is they, they just turn it over to them and don't worry about it. There it is. And celebrate a life well lived. And you can celebrate the time with your family. And Mueller will take care of everything. And there's more involved than you think. But all you have to do is say, please take care of this, Scott. And it's done. It's done. It'll be handled. It'll be handled correctly. 
uh, uh, they'll make the right choices or help you make the right choices, too, because, as I say, they've been doing this for a long, long time. And you can find out much more at MuellerMemorial.com. And okay. Justice and the Souchere. Only because they come to us. All the way from this time, uh, Mirador, San Jose, Ecuador, hmm. from the Traveling Limans at WorldWideWaftage.com. On this day... You're talking about November 6th. In 1854, 31 individuals formed the Pioneer Hook and Ladder Company, St. Paul's first volunteer firefighting force. Hmm. On this day... 11-6. In 1860, on the same day that Minnesota voted for Abraham Lincoln for president, a horse race in Freeborn County determined the county seat. Albert Lee and Itasca had both been vying for the honor, and corruption and vote buying was rampant. Ooh. Mm. My how things have changed. Adding to the excitement, <laughs> an Albert Lee racehorse, Old Tom, had been put up to run a race against Itasca's best. The businessmen of Itasca had secretly bought an Iowa racehorse named Fly. The plan being to encourage Albert Lee's folks to bet on Old Tom, win their money, and then buy votes for Itasca. Old Tom won the race, and Itasca lost its money and the county seat. And if you just ask me now what all of that meant, I would say I have no idea. Yeah, I don't either. None. On this day... Uh, November 6th. In 1874, St. Olaf College was incorporated, growing out of the Reverend Julius Muses Preparatory School in Holden. Classes began on November 6, 1875. And they would go on to, at that school, recruit a young Sophia Mikulski for hockey. However, she didn't want to go away for school. <laughs> <laughs> on this day in 1887. It's a long drive to Northfield, isn't it? 40 minutes. November 6th. Uh, on this day in 1887, the Virginia Street Church, Swedenborgian, yeah. designed by architect Cass Gilbert, was dedicated in St. Paul. Is that the church I'm thinking is on Virginia and Selby? Uh, uh, it's what very is it? what quaint, church is it? quaint looking. It's called the Virginia Street Church. Clever. Swed- How do they do that? Swedenborgian. Uh, there's a beautiful little church on Selby, I believe Virginia. That has to be it. I didn't know uh, it was. Virginia I didn't Street know it was designed church. by Cass Gilbert. I'll have a different thought of it as I walk by it from now on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Does that say it? Did you look it up? It looks like it is. Yes. Let me see the picture. Is there a picture? Let me uh, see the picture. Is there a picture? Uh, picture. Is, right. is there a picture? picture here? But that doesn't do any good since I'm. Yeah, not you're in the room. you're in uh, wherever you are. One hundred seventy right? Virginia Street. I think it's Virginia and Selby. I think it's the church I'm yes, thinking of. One hundred seventy Virginia Street. Uh, Is there a picture? I'm trying. Boy, oh boy, one. you're the slowest guy I know on the Internet. Rook, just go to Virginia Street Church. That's Org. the one I'm that thinking order. of. That's yep. The one. Problem there solved. you go. Problem solved. Thank you, GLers. Monday Night Sports Talk coming up. Yes, sir. And don't forget, if you have not done so. town council meeting. We are having that one week from this Wednesday. Tattersall, River Falls, if you haven't done so yet. It's going to be a real town council meeting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be festive. And it's there for you, but you do have to RSVP. And if you're not a member of the town council yet, not a problem. Just sign up now and also RSVP online at garagelogic.com. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us along on all of our social media channels, which includes Facebook, Twitter, and Insta. Insta? Insta. Bruh. Yeah, right.